Hello, friends of human spaceflight. Coming up, is Space Force a money pit? We look at why Elon is optimistic about the next Starship launch and lots more space news. Let's do this. As always, dominating space news this week is SpaceX Starship. Not only did we see a static fire from Ship 25, but Elon reports thousands of changes to Starship design. So, first up is Ship 25's static fire down in Starbase, Texas on Monday the 26th. You know the drill by now, the road closes, the farm vents, alarm sounds, then the good stuff happens. The mighty raptors roar to life, earbuds warning in 3, 2, 1. A confident static fire from SpaceX, for whom this is just another day at the office. But what makes this Starship different? Taking to Twitter spaces alongside Ashley Vance, Elon discusses the rise of commercial spaceflight, and a few interesting points were made. Here are what we rank as the most interesting points that Elon had to make. Progress has been slow towards Mars, but satellites are going well. Starship will build orbital economy off the back of f 9s success well over 1,000 changes to Starship design. 60% chance of reaching orbit depending on hot staging for the next attempt. Five weeks timeline for flight as of writing this. 1,000 meters of reinforced steel under the pad with water cooling channels. Think of it like a giant upside down shower head. Better thrust to weight ratio will allow Starship to leave the pad quicker. Engine issues from the last flight were a hodgepodge newer engines are likely to perform better. New hot gas manifold on Raptor 2 should reduce hot gas related issues. It's something Elon feels most optimistic about the new design change. Starship to date is approaching $3 billion in cost. Launching more Starships will give them a better chance to be more successful. Stage separation is still the biggest unknown due to the hot staging having not been tested yet. And then as quickly as Elon appeared, he vanished in an abrupt termination of the call. You know, as, I, I think, Ashley, the call is now terminated. All right. I saw that, you know, I was just following what you said out there. I thought we'd have a little little opportunity. You sure? <laughs> and like that, he's gone. Of course, this is just a glimpse at the progress that is being made at SpaceX, and we will keep you updated as things progress. Next up, we have a bit of a spicy segment, so we thought we'd call in the expert on spicy. Please welcome the Angry Astronaut. Good afternoon, very happy to be here on To The Future, so let's get down to it and start getting a bit angry. In a move more in tune with a Netflix show than a military branch, is Space Force underperforming? An appropriations committee last week approved an eye-watering $826 billion spending bill for the Department of Defense in the 2024 fiscal year. Although we are used to seeing big numbers from the DOD budget, it's interesting to note that this is a $1 billion reduction to the usual Space Force budget. The bill notes that the Space Force's budget request was $30 billion, which is 15% higher than the previous year, and stated that the budget request reflects serious shortfalls and disconnects. The Appropriations Committee commented that the Space Force cannot continue to depend on double-digit budget increases and criticized them for not safeguarding their services by putting their own five-year budget plan in place to account for advanced programs that they are developing, including jam-resistant radar, new GPS technologies, and the deep space radar system. The Appropriations Committee issued a stern warning that the Space Force needs to address these continuous shortfalls to prevent the need for Congress to top off their funding in the future or risk acquisition. Of the $1 billion reduction for 2024, the most significant cut was to the Space Force's classified programs, which received an overall reduction of $600 million in support. We will leave an article in the description below if you would like to read more about this topic. There is so much more I could say, but the show must go on, and it isn't all about me, is it? No, 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 it isn't. 
So what do you think should be done with the Space Force? Would you like us to dive deeper into those advanced programs? Let us know in the comments below. Back to you. Thanks, Angry. Truly couldn't have said it better myself. On to our next segment. Virgin Galactic celebrated its first commercial space flight on Thursday the 29th of June with its Galactic One mission taking off from Spaceport America in New Mexico. This is the second time this year that the company has launched its space plane, Spaceship 2 VSS Unity, this time with a crew of three Italian Air Force personnel and Virgin Galactic's lead operations engineer, Colin Bennett. As with any launch, the excitement was palpable as the space plane soared to an altitude of 50,000 feet over the Mexican desert, supported by White Knight 2 carrier plane VMS Eve. Spectators erupted into cheers as VSS Unity was released and it raged a further 53 miles to the edge of space. The mission acted as a 90-minute suborbital science expedition with 13 different experiments on board, both human-conducted and autonomous. The crew examined biomedicine, thermal fluid dynamics, and the development of innovative and sustainable materials under microgravity conditions, all within the confines of the specially modified cabin of VSS Unity. The crew experienced five minutes of weightlessness before gliding smoothly back down onto the runway and greeting the excited crowd. The next Virgin Galactic mission, Galactic 2, is slated for early August, with a crew of three private astronauts on board. The company expects a cadence of monthly launches thereafter, with seats open to the public and ranging in prices from $200,000 to $450,000. There are currently a whopping 800 customers on their suborbital flight waiting list, many of whom put down their deposits several years ago. This plan has drawn some scrutiny from critics after the Ocean Gate Titan submersible tragedy that occurred last week. What do you think? Do you feel Virgin Galactic has built up enough reputation to offer seats to space for the general public, or could tough times be ahead for the company? Again, let us know in the comments. On the 25th of June, the Crew Health and Performance Exploration Analog, or CHAPIA mission, commenced at NASA's Johnson Space Center in Houston, Texas. Four volunteers will reside within a 3D printed Mars simulation habitat on a 378 day mission that replicates the potential challenges of human life on the red planet. This is the first of three one year Mars surface simulations, each of which will test resource limitations, equipment failure, communication delays, and other environmental factors that we can expect on future crewed missions to the Mars surface. Kelly Haston, a research scientist whose expertise in building models of human disease will serve as commander for the mission. She is accompanied by flight engineer Ross Brockwell, whose background in structural engineering and his degree in aeronautics made him an ideal candidate. Board-certified emergency medicine physician Nathan Jones will be serving as medical officer for the mission, and Anka Solario, whose experience in microbiology and infectious disease research, among others, was selected as science officer for this mission. For the duration of the mission, the four analog astronauts will be sealed inside the aptly named Mars Dune Alpha habitat. The 1,700 square foot 3D printed structure contains four private crew quarters, dedicated workstations, medical station, common lounge areas, a galley, and food growing stations. A 1,200 square foot specialized sandbox is filled with red sand to simulate the Martian surface and will provide the ideal environment for the crew to test robotics operations, exercise, and simulated Mars walks. With the help of virtual reality, the crew will conduct field geology work, test communications abilities, and record data on simulated samples they retrieve for analysis. They will perform simulated science and maintenance activities, including setting up experiment packages and increasing solar panel functionality by taking steps to mitigate simulated Martian dust. The crew will perform remote operations of robotic elements, including controlling a helicopter-like drone and robot similar to a rover. They will work in pairs to investigate remote areas, identify and retrieve rock samples, and record geological data. These simulated traverses will aid future astronauts during the first human mission to the Red Planet. We can't wait to see what the Chapia crew learns during this mission, in preparation for humanity's journey to the Red Planet. We wish them the best of luck for their year in the habitat. Remember this little guy from just a few episodes ago? Well, little cutie guy. 
For those who don't remember, the Orbiter SN3 Tug got its ride to space aboard the SpaceX Transporter 8 mission back on June 12th this year. Shortly after its separation from the SpaceX second stage, Orbiter SN3 began an uncontrollable spin of around one revolution per second with launcher's team reporting that by the time the spacecraft started to send data, its batteries were already low due to non-optimal sun facing for the onboard solar. Launcher assessed the data and quickly attempted to jettison payloads earlier than expected. However, its primary payload Starfish Space's Otter Pup suffered damage and after just a few more orbits of our pale blue dot, the Orbiter SN3 stopped sending data. Launcher continues to work with Starfish Space to recover Otter Pup. Luckily, Launcher stated they managed to download all the flight data. We'll of course keep you updated as we learn more. Well. That's it for now, with a nice hand-picked selection of other amazing news to share with you. We look forward to bringing you the latest developments in space news next week and some fun along the way. Thanks for watching, and remember, onwards to the future. Not only did we see a static fire from uh, Stabe Shepherd, uh, what? $30, okay, <laughs> okay. You send someone to space for the price of a bus ticket, sure. Oh, damn. Might need to redo that. That whole time I was choking on a burp. Oh my god. Okay. Oh god, don't do that. The I am brew, no. Cha, man. Here we go. <laughs> they will perform simulated science and maintenance activities, including setting up exqu experiment? Really?